Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. What's up? It's been quite some time now, about a month. So a new video is here. We're gonna have a vinyl, mostly update. Um, yeah, it's gonna be a pretty fast one. The last video I did was 45 minutes long. Then back to back I released the footage from a real Batyushka concert. So yeah, uh, we had beers on the last update, then we had beers on the concert, so today we're just gonna have coffee, because it's uh, early morning, well not morning, afternoon, 12 o'clock exactly, and yeah, pumpkin uh, spice uh, coffee we're having, with the pumpkin spice uh, syrup, you know, autumn has arrived, so yeah, cheers. Pumpkin fucking syrup is good shit. With spices, yeah. Okay, so, uh, like I said, uh, this one is going to be a pretty fast update. I'm hoping it's gonna be a pretty fast update. In the background, we have a troll playing with their classical album, uh, Kill the Christians, I think is the translation. So yeah, uh, let's, I guess let's not waste any more time and start this. But before we start, I do wanna say thank you. We have reached 1000 subscribers all followers, whatever it's called here on YouTube. This is awesome. I could not have never imagined that we will reach this for the channel that shows what it shows for the politically incorrect updates and the concert footage and just the regular updates. It's pretty amazing. So thank you very much. Uh, I do really appreciate it. Now, let's start with the vinyl. Okay, so first off, we got a really big band. You all know it. You will hopefully love it. We have this one. So this is Emperor in the Nightside Eclipse. Of course, Emperor is a legendary band uh, established in uh, 1991 uh, in Norway. By today's standards, this is a, cl a cult classic band. Uh, there's not much you can say about this band, you know? It's really hard to talk about it. Let's just take a look at the art here. Of course, this is a classical album in the Nightside Eclipse, their first album released in 1994. This is a reissue by Candlelight and Spine Farm Records. Uh, let's take a look at the car. So yeah, uh, legendary album, first album, 1994. Uh, like I said, it's very hard to talk about this album because it's so influential, it's so monumentum, uh, it's like a monolith, you know? It's uh, if you know Emperor, you know Emperor. I mean, it's a symphonic, it's a gateful, it's symphonic black metal mixed with, uh, you know, those cold, icy Norwegian riffs. Uh, uh, basically a perfect masterpiece. One of the most cult albums of uh, that era of black metal. Of course, Emperor had uh, its share of controversies, as you know, from uh, interviews that inside it in the forest talking about how he's a satanist to faust uh, killing a man and to of course samoth uh, taking part in the church burnings uh, so this is a masterpiece that uh, stood uh, the test of time it's a perfect masterpiece in the night side eclipse so now that we talked about the album about the music about the status of this legendary man let's just take a look with what else this uh, re release comes so it comes with this poster. The poster is big, I don't know if it will fit. It's a two-sided poster, so one side is like this. Yeah. And another side is like this. It's a legendary picture of the band, young guys here. Cult as fuck. Uh, this one is very cool. This one is worthy of uh, putting in the frame. Let's a little bit down. And a little bit up, yeah. So it's a big poster, it's a cool poster. You can frame it uh, really well done here with the poster. Then the vinyl itself. The vinyl comes in the sleeve, mimicking the poster. And lyrics in the back. What's cool about the vinyl? This one I'm gonna pull out and show you. This is, this is called basically black, white, blue swirl vinyl. Uh, if you don't know, the back is also very cool, beautiful. The uh, the hype sticker said that uh, this is remastered on half speed, half speed master, which uh, maybe some of you 
found it different if you have the vinyl and you have, for example, the original CD and you can compare it with. But it sounds pretty good. Uh, the vinyl, like I said, is done very beautiful. And I have to thank uh, a friend from uh, Romania who sent me this uh, vinyl. I got it for a very cheap price. Uh, for those who don't follow me on Instagram, I uh, made a post one time from a local shop here in uh, Tallinn uh, that had Burzum albums, Emperor albums and uh, Mayhem albums, the first one. Nothing special about it, just the regular re-releases uh, on black vinyl for uh, 39 euros. So that's the current price here. <laughs> it's a complete fucking ripoff in my opinion. I don't know why they do it or who buys this, but somebody apparently does buy it if they're selling it for that price, which is insane. Uh, I got this uh, ship from Romania, basically half uh, price uh, of what it's going in here in Thailand. Uh, yeah, so uh, cult classic album, Emperor, everybody knows this band, uh, most people love this band. Right now it's of course uh, more of a live band, uh, which is, I think it's good, I think it's good, uh, you know, they didn't check on their legacy, which is fantastic. In my opinion, uh, cult album, cult uh, artwork, uh, very interestingly done. Uh, Re-release on um, black, white, blue swirl vinyl. In general, it's a very good re-release for this uh, amazing uh, masterpiece of the '90s. And the poster is cool. So yeah, uh, if you get it for a decent price, uh, pick it up. It's definitely worth it. So yeah, Emperor in the Night Side Eclipse. All right. So, uh, from Emperor and Norway, I think we are moving into the more raw territory. The more... More evil, maybe. I don't know. Okay, cheers. Damn, I can't imagine not having a coffee in the morning. Uh, yeah, okay, so enough of that coffee shit. Uh, we are moving into... Wales. You know this one. It's a new one. Revenant Marquis. A project that uh, is a, was established approximately in 2017. One man project. The guy behind the project goes by the name of S. So this is Welsh uh, black metal. Uh, this is the latest album. I think, if I'm not mistaken, this is the seventh uh, full length album. Uh, released in 2022, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe it was 2021, and I got it in 2022. Anyway, uh, it was uh, long on my uh, to get list. As you can see, the cover is very interesting here, and the album is called Milk Teeth. Uh, there you go, this ballerina. Uh, so, this one is limited to 500 copies, and it's on uh, Death Prayer Records which used to be uh, Death Cult Records. So now they're Death Prayer Records. Let's take a look at the back. We have a logo here. Yeah. So 500 copies and it's uh, basically raw black metal. It runs for 42 minutes. Uh, as you might know, some of you might know, uh, I'm a, quite a big fan of Revenant Marquis. I usually say Marquise because in our like for me it's easier to say Marquise than Marquis. But anyway, you got the point. So I, I'm uh, a fan of this kind of project. Uh, has been have been for a long time. Uh, the person behind the project is also a very cool dude. He sent me some stuff uh, one time. I have the signed copies of some of his albums. So yeah, uh, in general. Uh, worked out quite well yeah in general I would say that uh, Revenant Marquis is not a project that uh, is not a project for everybody of course in its uh, core and in its in its, in its essence it's um, raw black metal but for example this new album I think is the best one uh, it's more maybe I would even say more like 
people can take it more lightly than his previous works because his previous works are so intense. So basically it starts off with a classical musical intro, which uh, definitely gives you this uh, false sense uh, of security, of safety. Uh, then it blasts off into raw black metal with some of the most weirdest... Um, psychedelic guitars I would say something like that I would describe it like that it's really like psychedelic at some points uh, the guitars demonic howling uh, vocals are the screams demonic howling screams are the vocals that's how I would describe it. basically it's a like a lo-fi trip right into hell you have to be in the right mood to listen to it. Probably it has to be a little bit, uh, maybe dark outside, maybe a bit of a winter time. You get yourself a glass of wine or whiskey, beer won't do this album. It's not a banger, you know, where you can bang your head. It's more of a atmospheric experience. Uh, and it's previous uh, works by uh, Revenant Marquis. Uh, this album is Omnius. It's uh, ritualistic. And it sounds very fucking evil. Uh, another great job here. And like I say, and like I stress, uh, this is more of an experience. Uh, the whole project maybe behind the band is about experiencing something very ritualistic through black metal. So yeah, Revenant Marquis, Milk Teeth, uh, 500 copies on Death Prayer Records. X. Death Cult Productions. So yeah, uh, check it out if you haven't uh, really solid raw lo-fi black metal here. And uh, yeah, you won't be disappointed, I think, if you're a fan of uh, this subgender. It's very, very cool. Alright, we're actually moving uh, quite fast here. Got a few more items to talk about and that's it. Cheers. Okay, so next one. Next one is uh, from. I actually don't remember. This this one. You might have seen it flowing around. Uh, it already has a big uh, following. So this is Calderum. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, I remembered. It's not. Uh, I I want to say this Portuguese project, but no, it's a Spanish project. Uh, so it's Calderum, uh, one-man band, run by a guy called uh, Lord, Lord uh, uh, Mor Mortur, Mortourum, I think, Mortourum, yeah. Uh, established in 2018. So this one is a second full length, uh, and it's called uh, Mystical uh, Fortress of Iberian Lands. Taking a look here, very 90s looking photo, somewhere in the cave. Very cool. Let's take a look at the back here. And we can see that this one is also released by um, Death uh, Death Prayer Records, I think, not production. See, yeah, I think records. Death Prayer Records. So the same as previous one, the same as uh, Revenant Marquis. Uh, limitation is uh, 300 copies. Let's take a look inside. Yeah, it comes with a slip. So. As the cover speaks, this is a very cult 90s album, although it was released, of course, uh, this year. Let's take a look at the back here of the inner sleeve. A very cool uh, looking drawing. As you can see, the thanks here to Death Prayer Records. Yeah, records. And the back here, something like... You can't really tell what it is, but it looks like something like Lovecraftian, maybe, you know, tentacle size, stuff like that. But uh, yeah, it doesn't make any sense because uh, what I get from the music from this album. So let's return to the cover here. So yeah, Calderon from Spain. Um, so this is a very uh, masterfully done mix of uh, dungeon synth in a raw black metal. It runs for about 40 minutes. Um, this is basically your back to the roots, uh, back to the 90s, old school, um, classical, cult, uh, 90s black metal worship. 
the dungeon synth parts are uh, extremely well written. Extremely re- well written. They feel epic. They feel mysterious. Uh, interestingly enough, the whole album is done so organically well that it actually feels like um, maybe a journey through, you know, a forest, then through mountains, then there is like some castle on the in the mountains, and it, all of this is going on at night. It actually carries this dense atmosphere of... Uh, of this trip every song feels like uh, it's about something it's about like yeah moon whatever castle mountain forest it has that 90s vibe i think there's not much satanism here but it's absolutely amazing uh, you can even see by the names of the songs yeah like i said there's a full moon song fortress of doom uh, forest of course mountains so basically everything that i just talked about you get that atmosphere like you're traveling through some i don't know fortress of doom you know there's a full moon and you're possessed by it it has one of the best uh atmospheres uh that i heard for a long time in black metal which is amazing uh, so uh i think this one is, yeah, I said, it's limited to 300 copies, but it's, I think it's sold out really fast. So you should uh, definitely keep an eye on um, Calderum, because it's a great project. Absolutely amazing. He nails black black metal just perfectly. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, like I said, this is Calderum from Spain, uh, one-man project, a mystical fortress of Iberian lands. Uh, please, please, please keep an eye on this one. I guarantee you, if you just give it a spin even on the Bandcamp, uh, you will definitely dig it. It's a blast from the past and one that is definitely worth your time. Uh, Not like some bands just, you know, they try so hard to copy and they fail, you know, but this one is... uh, You can see the originality behind it and you can see the worship of old black metal here. It's amazing. So, yeah. Calder. Okay. Actually, we are going really fast. So, uh, yeah, cheers. And uh, we have one item left and it's not black metal. Wow. It's not black metal. And it's not even death metal. And it's not even dungeon synth. Uh, Yeah. Cheers. Oh, you would never guess what it is. But I'm going to show you. Already. Okay, here we go. So here's the CD. I'm gonna put it like this. And here is what it is. Bam! Analkant. 40 more reasons to hate us. <laughs> I'm gonna get to why I bought this and where I bought it from. So, Analkant established in 1988 in USA. Uh, established by a guy called uh, Seth Putman, I think. Uh, people who know Analkan, they know this is a basically grind, noise, punk, hardcore, maybe a little bit of some death metal in it project. So it's all over the place. Uh, I think it's one of the projects that is not listed on Metal Archives. Uh, yeah, even though, I don't know, I would say it deserves a place here. Uh, place there, uh, but yeah, they don't put it there. A very controversial project uh, due to its dark humor, uh, due to the offensive lyrics, the vulgar language. Uh, th- I think you can, for, for people who are unfamiliar with it, you can definitely find a documentary on YouTube. I think I watched it. It's kind of a cult band in its own way, you know. So this is their third full-length CD, released in 1996. Uh, uh, it's basically, yeah, I would say it's grind. I, I don't have to describe it for you, but like, uh, yeah, people who know, who know, people who don't know, they will check it out. So the guy Seth Putman actually died in uh, 2011, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so for those who don't know, I'm just gonna, of course, 40 songs, you understand that it's uh, like maybe 30 minutes because it's grind, like. But the songs are very energetic and very obscure. They make you laugh sometimes, and they are also violent. So uh, it's kind of that music. Most people actually uh, like. I think most people in the grindcore scene actually hated Anal Kant because you know 
because of the way they did things, the way they sang things, and how drunk they were all the time and stuff like that. So yeah, uh, for example, I'm gonna give you some masterpieces, uh, some names of uh, songs from this album, so you understand what I'm talking about, for those who don't know. For example, let's take um, song number 12, You're a Fucking Cunt. Song number 31, Your Family is Dumb. Then, Big Pants, Big Losers. I'm sick of you. You look divorced. I hope you get deported. You know, here it comes. The more and more offensive shit. Steroid guys. Uh, there's one called... I can't find it, but there's... Yeah, uh, everybody is... Everybody in underground scene is stupid. Dumb, fat and gross. So yeah, you get the point. There's a lot of uh, master. There's also songs about... I think like everybody in the world is gay or something like that. Or the gayest man in the world. So you get the point. You get the themes. Uh, so they uh, offended everybody. Uh, I clearly remember when I was young, like, uh, so I'm gonna go off, I'll tell you a little bit story. So when I remember how I first heard about this band, my, one of my friends uh, said, like, oh, have you listened to Grind at all? I said, like, no, I don't like Grind. And he goes, like, yeah, I'm into, like, black metal too, but uh, I've heard this band, Anal Kant. <laughs> and I go, like, what the fuck, Anal Kant? He goes, like, yeah, Anal Kant. So, uh... He goes like, there's a song uh, where the lyrics go like, Hitler was a sensitive man. I was like, what the fuck? And then, yeah, he basically introduced me to it. I listened to it. I didn't find it enjoyable because I don't enjoy grind. It's too fast. But for a joke, this is a great band. So why I bought it, I went to the local secondhand uh, store and bam, they had the CD. And I was like, what the fuck? It's unbelievable that they have Anal Kant in Estonia on a CD. And why I bought it, because I think in 2006, maybe a bit earlier, maybe 2007, so from 2005 to maybe 2007, I've seen Anal Kant live. They played in Tallinn, uh, so there was like this big fucking um, uh, gig, a lot of bands played, I think four bands played. I don't remember the first band, but they set up the good mood, everybody enjoyed it. I don't remember the second band, also everybody enjoyed it. But I do remember the third band who played there. The third ba band uh, who did the warm-up was a band from uh, Russia called uh, Anal Nasarok, which roughly translates to as Anal Rhino, you know, because why not? Everything's Anal. <laughs> yeah, Anal Rhino. And they did a really good job. They, like, played really hard. Uh, they were really good and okay, and... Uh, Crowd got into it, crowd really enjoyed it. Uh, and then I understood that there was a lot of people who didn't know actually who were Anal Kant. They thought like, oh, it's some big grand uh, core band that's coming to Estonia to play in the pub. So Seth comes on stage completely fucking drunk, uh, probably high on drugs as well, sits down, starts to mumble, falls. Uh, falls on the guitars, uh, falls on the drums, sits again, starts to mumble something. The songs are like 10 seconds long. 15 minutes into the concert, half of the crowd has left. <laughs> so then my friend uh, uh, told me that, uh, my friend knew the organizer, I think, uh, of the concert. He said that they already had trouble on the border, when crossing the border to Estonia, because he had so many prescription drugs and he had to prove it. It took like three hours for him to prove it, that all the drugs that he carries are prescribed to him. So yeah, when I saw that, I remembered that uh, nostalgic gig. And yeah, I bought Anal Kant. Uh, I actually listened to it. It was, it was a fun listen. I'm not, I'm not gonna like re-listen to it every day. I'm not gonna buy anything more unless again I stumble across it in Estonia for five uh, fucking euros. Yeah, it's a fun band, a fun concept. Maybe it should have been on my politically incorrect update, but those updates are for you know a certain uh, kind of black metal, mainly uh, right and uh, left. Uh, bands. Uh, this is more of a humor band that just likes to piss everybody off. Also, uh, he wrote the song about coma one time, making fun of people who are in coma, and he actually got into coma, and then he went out from the coma. So yeah, 
Very interesting, weird individual, very interesting, weird band. Uh, Anal Kant, 40 more reasons to hate us. <laughs> yeah, that's it. So, 25 minutes, uh, approximately, and uh, yeah, I think I've spent uh, 10 minutes talking about Anal Kant experience and the concert. So, guys, again, thank you very much for uh, 1000 subscri subscribers. I do appreciate it. Uh, we are going to have a giveaway in. December with the winner in uh, January for this for a thousand subscribers next uh, month we are going to have a tape update I think uh, maybe something will a be added to the tape update but primarily right now I think it's going to be the main core of that update will be tapes because I have already five tapes I think uh, that I didn't show plus maybe something else will come so yeah once again thank you uh, Stay safe, enjoy uh, autumn, October, and as usual, stay fucking black metal. See you around. <laughs>